Hey guys, this is Leah with Scott Lavore Marketing, and in today's tip video, I'm going to show you everything you need to do to transition over from Dot Loop to DocuSign. So if your market center is pulling the trigger and moving everyone over to DocuSign, there are a few things that you'll need to do uh, for your active transactions specifically. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and log into command. We would log into command by going to agent.kw.com. So again, that's agent.kw.com, as you see on the top of my address bar. And this login and password will be the same thing as your MyKW password. Okay, same thing as your Kelly password. Uh, they're trying to keep the logins all the same here. So we'll go ahead and log in. Okay, and the first thing we need to do is make sure that DocuSign is hooked up to your command account. So we would do that by clicking on your name on the very top right of command, and then click on settings from that dropdown. Okay, so go ahead and click on your name on the top right and then settings from that drop down. And of course, if you're still trying to get into command, feel free to pause this video at any time so that you can catch up and get to where I am. So we're clicking on settings here. And that will take you directly into your connected apps. So this is showing you any apps that are currently connected to your command account. All right, and you'll want to make sure that you see DocuSign near the top, okay? So the top of these are your connected apps, so apps that are already connected up. So I already have, it says disconnect account on the right-hand side. It's near the top, so I know it's connected to my command account. All right, if you are not seeing DocuSign near the top, all right, you can scroll on down to find DocuSign from this list. I believe it's under productivity originally. And you can click on connect account to the far right of DocuSign to create an account or connect up an existing DocuSign account. Now, if you have any trouble with that, I'm going to put a link in the description of this YouTube video on how to connect up your DocuSign account to command. If you have any issues, you can watch that video. Or you can also email support at scottlevoymarketing.com and we'd be more than happy to set that up for you. Okay. So you will need to have your DocuSign account hooked up. Okay, outside of that, <coughs> excuse me, so what you need to know about any existing uh, transactions, so if you have any active or under contract transactions in dot loop that you're working on, all right, and that will, you'll be working on moving forward in DocuSign, okay, so you're going to need to manually move that over. All right, so in the opportunities section here, so I'm clicking on opportunities, and that's a little handshake icon on the bottom left here, or on the left hand side. Right, in this opportunities section, you do have a dot loop, dot loop import tool on the very top right. However, I do not suggest using the dot loop import tool here if you are going to be moving over into DocuSign. So any active listings or, or buyers, any active transactions, you will need to manually recreate in KW command in the opportunity section so that it will link to DocuSign. Okay, if you import the uh, loop over from dot loop, it will only let you go into dot loop from here. Okay, and you're instead wanting to go into DocuSign, so that will just need to be manually recreated, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so to recreate any opportunities in command, and again, this will just need to be done with any existing transactions that you're currently working on. Okay, if this is a sold property, or a, a property that you are done with, all right? You do not need to actually pull that over to command. You will always be able to access those transactions by going to dotloop.com moving forward. Okay, so I'm just gonna say that one more time because I know that's a big question. All right, moving forward, all of your previous loops will stay in dotloop. So you'll always be able to go to dotloop.com to log in and see any past loops, any sold loops. Okay, you just won't be able to create more loops in your .loop account. So you'll always be able to view that in .loop. So you do not need to bring over any sold transactions into command. You'll only need to bring over existing transactions that you're currently working on. So hopefully that's clear for everyone. So to recreate that transaction <coughs> or that opportunity in command, you do need to make sure that the contact is entered in first. So in this contact section here, Right, that is slightly different in command. The contact has to be created first in order to create an opportunity. So this contact section here, I would click on add contact on the top right. I would click on add contact on the top right again. To add in the contact name and email address, that's really the main two things that you'll need here. 
you can click create and that is the first step. All right, so we completed the first step. We added the contact to your command database. And now let's come over to the opportunity. So in the opportunity, again, the opportunity will always be the handshake icon on the left-hand side menu. And you can always, if you forget which one it is, right, clicking this KW logo at the top will pop out and show you that that is the opportunity section. And now we'll need to create an opportunity. So we can do that by clicking on the create opportunity option on the very top right. So once I click on this teal button on the very top right, where it says create opportunity, it will pull up some fields that I'm required to enter in. So any, any fields that have this red star, the red asterisk is required to enter in. So we have our market center name here and our team name. Or if you're a part of a team, you can go ahead and select that from the drop down list. You would select the opportunity type, whether that's a listing, buyer, landlord, or tenant. Okay, so let's say I'm, I'm recreating a listing opportunity here. The owner, slightly confusing, all right, that is not talking about the owner of the transaction. I'll always say your name or your Rainmaker's name, okay, if you're on a team. The client, so let's say we go ahead and put in the client's name. Okay, and the client will already have to be in your contact database to pull up here. You can also put in a co-seller if there is a spouse in the transaction. Opportunity name, okay, typically you'll want to name this the property address, so let's say I put in 123 Main Street here as well. You do not have to add in custom tags, the close date, or the listing price, okay, you can see those are not starred, so these are not mandatory. So commission rate, 3%. Opportunity phase and opportunity stage. All right, this correlates to where you want them to this opportunity to display on your sales pipeline here, which is viewed in the background here. And we do have a class on that separately if you'd like that. Feel free to check out the opportunities class specifically. All right, but depending on where they are, if they are in the cultivate or appointment or active stage, you can go ahead and select that here. And you can even do the opportunity stage even further. Okay, and you can customize these, and again, the opportunity class will show you that. So let's say they are in the showing phase, stage, sorry, and click create. All right, these are all changeable, guys. All right, anything here, the only thing that's really set in stone is your client name, market center, and the team name. Other than that, you can change everything. So I'll click create, and that takes me over to the details. And again, feel free to pause the video if you're still catching up and you're entering in that info. You can pause it to follow along. And we're now switching over to this document section. Okay, so we're in the final steps here of what we need to do. So we're in the document section. From here, in order to go into DocuSign, you'll click on Start a Transaction on the far right here. Okay, and this is a very important step. So please make sure that you really think about which one you're selecting. So if you have the option to connect to DocuSign or DotLoop, right, you'll want to go ahead and select DocuSign if you're moving over to DocuSign. Once you select one of these options, there's no changing that. Right? So you'll always go to DotLoop or you'll always go to DocuSign from the start of transaction. So if you're moving over to DocuSign with your market center, make sure we'll go ahead and select the top DocuSign option. Okay, so I clicked on start a transaction, or it might say go to a transaction, and then you'll select DocuSign from this dropdown. Very, very important that you select DocuSign. And it may prompt you to go ahead and log in. Okay, So once you log in once, it keeps you logged in for the rest of the day on your computer that I've seen. Um, hopefully in the near future it will just stay connected so you don't have to remember your password here. Which, let's see if I do remember my password. Beautiful. And I am in, so you'll put in your DocuSign login and password. And again, feel free to pause the video if you are trying to catch up and log in. Okay, so that takes you directly to your DocuSign account. It creates a DocuSign room, right, named the opportunity name that we put in. And now we just need to add any documents from DotLoop over into DocuSign here, okay? So really the easiest way that I've seen, guys, is just going into DotLoop, downloading all of your forms, and re-importing it into this new DocuSign room. So let's take a look at how that would work. So I'm pulling up a new tab here, so a new tab on the top of my browser, so not to confuse anyone, but I'm pulling up a new tab to go to dotloop.com to log in directly. Okay, or of course you can go to dot, 
dot loop however you feel comfortable if that's through my kw that's totally fine as well but go ahead and pull up a new tab and go into your dot loop account and go ahead and open up the loop you're trying to move over okay so let's say just pretend this is my active loop that i am still working on that i need to pull over to docusign i already like you just saw we just created the room in docusign so now we just need to pull over the forms so to do that i'm going to download each form so you can either download them one at a time by clicking on the check mark to the left of each form. Once I click the check mark, I'll have the option to download that. You can also <clears throat> download all the forms at once, which might be easier for you, okay? So if you click on the checkbox to the left of the folder name on the top, you'll then have the download option. You can download the entire folder, so that your entire sales folder, listing folder, whatever it might be. It will download, so I can now come back over to DocuSign, so I'm just switching tabs here. So I'm going back to my DocuSign room, okay? You'll hear that term a lot. They're called DocuSign rooms in DocuSign. So whereas it was dot loop loops, loops and dot loop are the same thing as rooms in DocuSign. So now that I'm back in my DocuSign room here, in the Documents section, I'm coming up to Add on the very top right. I'm adding that from my computer. And I'm just going to double click <clears throat> on those forms to pull that in to DocuSign right away. All right, guys. And that is all you need to do to pull over your active loops, okay, active transactions into DocuSign. So you'll need to recreate the opportunity in KW command and add in these documents <clears throat> to your new DocuSign room. Again, this is not necessary. If there's a sold transaction or a transaction you are no longer working on, those will stay in DotLoop and you can go to DotLoop.com to view those in the future. Okay. Um, but for your active loops, you will need to do this process. You can, just a quick note on this, uh, you can pull over. So I'm switching over to command here. I'm going back to command just a different tab. I just wanna, you can just watch on my screen for this. I just wanna point out that in your opportunities section, this dot loop import tool, I'll put a video on the details of this video as well for the dot loop import tool so you can see how that works. If you wanna bring over your sold transactions just purely for your numbers in command, you can definitely do that. All right, but again, that transaction would always go back to dot loop if you use the import tool. All right, guys, if you have any questions at all on this, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at support at scottleroymarketing.com. I'd be more than happy to help you through this transition. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. Let us know if you have questions, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, guys.